When we went through the module on peer assessment, we did have one kindergarten teacher on our team and the entire team, which was comprised of second through fifth grade teachers, said, well, what is, you know, what is that teacher going to do? How can they possibly do peer assessment with students who are five years old? And they all rallied around her. They helped her to devise her plan and then she actually had several attempts at it. Mariah, so you got, got it because you had the right letters. Okay, and you had to see if it's, what does it say? Okay, all lower. And it was probably yeah, one of the most successful peer assess examples of peer assessment that we saw through that module. So it proves that all students can do it if they, if they know what their end goal is and they know what the criteria is, they can move each other forward. Okay, bring it to the mic. In my class today, you saw peer assessing. The students were working on writing their last names and so I used this opportunity to create a rubric so the students could check each other's work and help each other instead of just having me check all the time. That why is it supposed to go the other way? The benefit of using peer assessment is I have found that students really respond well to each other. They are really good at giving uh, positive feedback to each other and they're very honest but they're also very kind to each other. So using peer assessment is just another way to have them check and be checked, but it's not always me checking them. It gives them another avenue to be checked. In the beginning, we just talked about what do the words peer and assessing mean. And so we made a whole chart all about what does it mean to peer assess? Why should we peer assess? And that was our baseline. What does peer assessing look like? What does it look like? Hayden? Oh, it looks like you're watching whose parents is in your work. Very good. Your eyes are on your work. Your eyes are on the person that's talking to you. Should you be looking all around the classroom? No. No. Should you be looking at somebody else's group over there? No. No. Eyes on your work. Good. What should peer assessing sound like? Miles? If your peer is talking, you be quiet. Excellent. So how many people are talking at one time? Preston? Um, one. one person is talking at one time, and like Miles said, the other person is listening quietly. Good. Um, what was this one that's really important? Stay on, Claire? Topic. Stay on topic. Should you be talking about Star Wars? No. no. Should you be talking so about So after we practice what does it look like, what doesn't it look like, I modeled it three times with a student, a different student each time, so they could see what it looks like, what it sounds like, what the rubric, what the expectations are, and what they are looking for in each other's work. And just review our rubric. So remember, the first thing you check for, do they have all the right letters? You're only looking for every letter that's in their last name. Do they have every letter in their last name? What if they have an extra letter? Do they got it if they have an extra letter? Hey, Tommy? No, no then they're still working. So they need every letter and they don't want to have any extra letters. The next part, you're looking for one uppercase, then all lowercase. So you're checking for nice tall capital and lowercase letters. If they have an uppercase letter in the middle of their name, they're still working. Got it? Okay, and the last one is nice and neat. This is where you are looking to see, are their letters nicely on the lines? Look at the one that I wrote. See if their lowercase letters are touching that middle and bottom line. See if their T's touch the top and the bottom line. So you're looking for it to be written nice and neatly. No sideways letters, no backwards letters. Um, the last time we did this, somebody had their A backwards. So that person was still working. Okay, Claire, come on up. I'm going to let Claire go through mine so you can review and see. Make sure you're being respectful and responsible as you're working. While I was modeling, I also gave information on what good feedback is and what feedback shouldn't be. And so that really helped them know what types of things to say to their peers. Missing that A in, the, in front of the R. Oh, very good. And then after I modeled it, then I very strategically partnered them up with students who I know would understand the rubric to help them with a student who may not understand the rubric. In lowercase, 
Um, and the C's are the only one that's supposed to be an uppercase. Ah, thank you. So she spotted my uppercase T. Is that supposed to be uppercase? No. No, it needs to be lowercase, so I'm still working. And the last one, she's checking for nice and neat. You are still working on this one because the T and all the other letters that are not where they're supposed to be are up like last time. Oh, yes. I made My advice to other teachers would be don't be afraid to try it. Um, I was very overwhelmed with the thought of trying this in kindergarten and how in the world do I make this work with five and six year olds. But being willing to try it is one thing that really helped. Also, all of the modeling that led up to letting them do it was very helpful and I feel that really helped build the solid foundation for peer assessing and now we're able to do it in all different subjects. This one is barely touching the bo bottom, so still working. But it's okay. We're in kindergarten. We don't know every single thing in the world.